How's it going, goons? Welcome back to the Pac-2 Dynasty, where we are trying to rebuild both Washington State and Oregon State from the ground up with the hopes of taking both teams to the college football playoff before EA's new College Football 25 comes out in July. In the last week, both Oregon State and Washington State lost, the former losing 49-6 to to a pretty solid San Diego State team, and the latter losing at the end of the game 30-23 to against the FCS Montana Grizzlies. Now Wazoo's gonna have an extra week to think about that loss because they are on a bye, and normally we would be starting with them this week, so I guess that we'll go through their recruiting first. Now we did have about half a million recruits visit that game, and a couple of them actually committed, so we can go through and try to scroll down here to the bottom and see what it is. We do lose a chance at the strong safety, Chidi Ko. Uh, but Tommy Akers, the 62 overall quarterback, has committed. We don't even know if he's any good. Um, but at this point, he's better than what we have. And Chris Goodman, we know he's not very good. But hey, he goes up a, a couple overall there. So we're going to keep scouting these guys to see what we have, just because I'm curious. But uh, just in general, it's, it's looking a little bit rough in some spots. And there's a few guys that we'll probably have to take off the board this week because we are just too far behind. And a couple of guys that I'm curious to see if they're actually going to be worth getting. Ooh, Kyle Bremby is a plus 10 overall gem. Does he like us or does he hate us? He loves us. Ooh, a 77 overall wide receiver. Let's dump the points and uh, see if we can pick him up. He's the number one 100 wide receiver in the country. And he is uh, pretty useful. 86 speed, not the quickest guy out there, but 90 acceleration. He gets up to that speed pretty quick. Uh, decent agility, 85 jumping. He should be able to high point the ball pretty well. 76 carrying if we need to use him on some sort of option or jet sweep. Uh, and his catching is okay. 77, 76 spectacular catch and 68 catch in traffic. That is more than serviceable for us. With 82 route running and 83 release, I feel like he should be pretty dang good. Ooh, another gem for us. Plus nine overall. We've been putting points into him. Zach Aaron, the tackle. Uh, 83 pass block, 85 run block, 91 impact. The question is, are we going to be able to pick him up? Are we even in the lead? We are. A slight edge over Arizona and Air Force right now. Beavers, he's on the board, I think, for him. I, I, I imagine. He might not be. We'll see. But uh, 2,800 points. I, I think even if we were looking at this as a as a Oregon State, that we probably would just let him go. Just looking at everybody else, we have been scouting a few guys, and I'm going to have to start removing some players from the board and adding other guys in, especially because, I mean, we're never going to overtake a 5,800-point deficit when Wisconsin's about to have this Juco guy locked up. Now I'm going to go through and be deep diving the recruiting outside of videos in this series, just so that we can keep things moving pretty quick, and then we can jump in and give updates. And this is a guy that we just added, and I don't think that we have a chance to get him, but when somebody's last name is Hasty and they're a wide receiver, you got to add him to the board because the calls on that would be phenomenal. So we have our recruiting done, and that's all that we could do with Wazoo for the week. So we'll go over to our Dynasty Central and uh, see what's going up with Willie Met in Corvallis. Now, the Beavs haven't had anybody commit to this school yet. Uh, there's five more guys ready for visits, though, so we are going to go ahead and keep setting these up. I've been looking to just go early in the season um, with some guys. I guess, let's see, with Utah being there, we'll send him to the Washington State game. That one's going to be a big one no matter what for us. But if we're not really competing against other people, then we're just going to look for the most... Oh, gosh. Uh, nobody... DeMarco James. I mean, we do have a lot of running backs that we're looking for. <laughs> we do have a lot of running backs on the board. So it's going to be difficult to find some spots to throw these guys in. Um, I might wait a little bit just to see because there's a chance that we don't add them in. Um, just, you know, trying to make sure that I'm not, you know, losing recruiting points over... Billy Nick Nanny, which uh, what a what a name that is, you know, because I don't want him hurting our recruiting if he's just a 56 overall uh, running back and we have a chance to get a 72 overall guy. The big thing for the Beavers recruiting right now is that we have big leads with uh, so many people on our board. Uh, I had to remove a couple, two guys uh, that we were way far out on. But beyond that, we have just these massive leads. Um, so it's going to make recruiting pretty interesting. We're going to be able to focus kind of a lot on these guys near the bottom of the board, but also at the top here, I'm going to be keeping, you know, 10 points in here. Just, I, I want to keep that lead growing just in case. Uh, but that way I can also kind of, it's a mental thing for me so that I can remember who we're looking at, but we can take some points out of them just so that we can continue to scout because these things could be big. Uh, you never know when we're going to find somebody massive. So uh, you know, if we find gems, if we find phenomenal players that just happen to want to come play for us, 
I'm not going to complain about that, and it's going to be super useful for us. So with the recruiting done for both teams, we can go ahead and hop into our first and only game of the episode. I know I've said I would be doing two games per episode, and this is the third episode, and we've only done one game per episode. But that's just because there's been bye weeks. Uh, in the next couple of weeks, once the buys start to dwindle down and we get into the heart of the season, both teams will be playing on the same week, so we'll be fitting them both into the same episode. For some reason, we are favored in this game. We... Uh, are playing a team that is 0-1. Apparently, Illinois got shut out in their first game. That, that is great news for us. Um, they're better in pretty much everything, uh, except we have six points and they have none. So it's like the worst in the world versus, you know, the second worst. Uh, I don't think it's going to go well for us, but we're favored to win. You know, we were favored to win with Washington State against Mizu, and that didn't work out so well. So who knows how this is going to go. It is, of course, shaky bars for the fighting Illini on this one. 79 overall to our 39. Uh, they are a worse team than San Diego State, though. So maybe we do stand a chance in this game uh, against a Big Ten opponent in a conference that did not want us. Ooh, so here we are, Memorial Stadium in the great state of Illinois. Seeing what we can do. Tails has not failed us yet. Well, okay, it just failed. So uh, there's our first loss of the day as we'll see what we can do here. Osita Salam in the end zone ready to return this one he didn't have a great uh a couple of opportunities in the first episode and it's not so great there you know he's got the highest speed on the team but the acceleration we might have to swap him out let's see what can we do against these guys brian mark ready to get this one no cordell carell keeps it slides down on the option keeper picks up five yards on first down that's a great start we're going to try to trick them here. We are uh, a running team. We've come out five wide. Maybe we can get them with the QB draw. 79 was blocking nobody. That's uh, pretty detrimental. We still got a yard, but that could have been a little, little bit more. And on a quick third and four, trying to prevent a three and out. We've got Little and Mark looking for the triple option. I don't know if I trust these reads. We're going to hand it off to Mark. He's got some blockers and he falls forward for the first down. That is massive. Battle of the 0-1s. One of these teams is getting their first win of the season. For us, it could be our only win of the season if we get so lucky. We're going to bring Pennington in motion, trying to help Mark on this one. And Steven, I feel like I called him Brian earlier. Steven Mark uh, kind of just bouncing around, finds a little bit of a hole, cutting it back inside, and he gets five more. Because I'm swapping between teams so frequently, I feel like there's going to be good chances I mix up some names here. So forgive me for that. Second and five, they are bringing pressure, and Steven's going to lose two yards. So... A tough third and seven coming up. We've already said, though, this is a power running team at its core. Third and seven, as far as I'm concerned, we've got two downs to pick up some yards. So as long as we do something on the first down, we got it. Novak. Oh, there's a flag down. This is probably a clipping. We've been having some clipping issues. Okay. Holding. At least we know it was just last episode. So they're going to decline that. That's a mistake. And if you didn't think we were going to go for this, again, you are a fool. Fourth and three. We're going with the read option, handing it off to Novak. <laughs> Son of a gun. <laughs> Probably would have been better punting that one away. You know what? Maybe we need to embrace the Iowa mentality a little bit more and fight for field position. The only worry I have with that is we did... I guess I thought we were a little bit further downfield. Uh, we give them the ball at their own 34, so that's pretty rough. But uh, maybe if... I don't know. If the defense was better, I would feel more confident punting, but... I just don't see it working, but a scoop and uh, a fumble there. Garcia picked it up. He's got a head of steam here, heading downfield. I don't know if he can outrun their big boys, but our big boy taking it way down. As I'm saying, the defense can't get it done. They force the fumble and immediately get the offense the ball back. So just like that, from their 34-yard line, now we're on our 34-yard line. St Steven Mark back in there, bringing pressure. We're going to run the counter. The blocking, not there, and he's going to lose yards. And we got to work in a little bit more passing. And what kind of pass are we going to run? Well, it's going to be a bubble screen. And it's almost picked off. Ooh, it was completed. But we gain nothing. It's third and 13. Maybe a little bit of a good warm-up pass for Cordell there. As, uh, we'll see if we can go to the air on this one. We know that he's not very good. We're looking for Mark on this one. Or, oh, Young, I think, I don't know. I think that DB could have stepped up. But just an accurate pass would have been nice. And I have accidentally gone in the hurry up here and called a play. And the thing is, I think that uh, I'm fully shifting gears here. We are going to... Well, first, we'll see if we can call get catch them offside. Um, but I would like to 
just punt this one away. Try to cough and corner him. We'll see. Can we win the defensive battle? Otherwise, we're taking a false start. And nobody's jumping on either side. No, no delay a game. Okay. Well, we'll take the we'll take the delay a game. No false start. No encroachment. But now we can just punt this one away. The fans here in Illinois think that they did something on that one, but really, it's kind of how we planned it. The question is, can this hit the ground or can he buff it? Oh, we slam into him. Hey, we could have given we we could have had better field position on this. Could have actually coffin corner him, but they didn't get much of a chance to return, which is huge. And they tried to pass. The coverage was surprisingly good last time, and it forced them into that scramble. I'm expecting a run on this first down. Uh, we'll see what we can do. Man in motion. Ooh, I don't know how to feel about this one. It is going to be a draw. We're not going to be able to get there in time. Baker, good tackle. Stops him at just a gain of three. Ooh, coming out in the eye. Expecting a run on this one. We're going to bring Sandy up. They do hand it off, and we hit him in the gap, but he breaks three, finds a hole. And if he can pick up another block, it might be enough. He, he, heck, he's got the speed for it to be enough. Sandy's not fast enough to get there. And just like that, a huge run for the touchdown. Oh, it was a broken play. We got the stop, but just couldn't tackle him. Couldn't bring it down. And just like that, we're down 7-0. Now, well, that's not at all what we wanted to have happen there. So much for the field position battle on that one. That's why I don't really want to punt, but... Who knows? Maybe you'll see the slum can get a... It's just not... It's not good enough. So the running game has been starting to get shut down. We've got a quarterback who can't throw the football. Who knows what to do here? Uh, I certainly don't as we try to run it and just immediately get gobbled up in the backfield. I think Lainai really bringing the heat on us. They are the ones that want the win. It seems like more than us at this point. Waiting for it. A was open. I was late throwing it. But it's a mile out of bounds anyways. And Cordell, man... He's just not getting it done. Big third down here and what is likely going to be punting range. We got to try to throw this up and see if something can happen. But obviously with the inaccuracy and with the sack coming, Cordell, just not enough time in the pocket. They brought the pressure and brought us down. It's fourth and a mile and a half. Looks like they're even trying to bring everything. Newman going to have some pressure to get this one off. We're just going to try to get it down. Make sure. Oh, my gosh. They came awfully close to that one. Marsh. Fair catches it for some reason, caught it on the run, and they're going to be starting at midfield for their third drive. Well, we're going to start bringing a little bit more pressure, trying to stuff this run as they're not going to run, but we hit the quarterback as he's throwing and it just barely was going forward. So close to that being a fumble. Good stop, though. The pressure got to the QB. That's huge. Back out in the I formation. They scored on this last time out. We got to be a little bit worried. They're going to hand it off. Plenty of space. And he's fallen forward for eight. Jordan Anderson, just a beast of a man there. Big third down. I feel like this could be a, a spot where they would go for it. So I'm a little bit curious to see how this works. Expecting them to run the football on this third down. But a short pass wouldn't be outside the realm of possibility. They do hand it off. Plenty of space. Oh my gosh, the pancakes are out in full force here. It's, a, it's like we're at a fire station for their pancake feed. Four carries for 103 yards for Jordan Anderson. That's awful. This is just not going according to plan. Although I don't know what the game plan really was. This is going to be a draw and we just missed him. Anderson did get tackled. Seems like if you get behind him, you can tackle him. But from the front, he's just going to take you out. And that's the end of the first quarter. So a quick one down seven, nothing. It feels like they are about to make it 14, nothing. But coming into the second, we'll just hope for the best. I'm going to key in on Anderson. We'll see what we can do here. Trying to stop him, calling it a run. They are not going to run. We're in trouble. Quarterback scrambling. He throws it off the back foot and finds Ryman into the end zone. Tip Ryman. Ryman. Goodness gracious. What a throw. What a find. The awareness to see him out there as the tight end scores easily. Just like that. 14 nothing. Felt like maybe we had a chance to stop the QB on a little bit of a scramble. And here we're going to let Lions return this. Make Osita go out and block. And Lions. Oh. He had a little bit more speed. He was going to be right around that edge with a chance to go offense is just really stagnating it, it feels like overall the oregon state roster is a little bit better than washington states but they're just not able to do anything is there's a flag down here i'm gonna assume this is another hold offside oh what a gift i didn't see at all what happened there but hey oh i am more than happy being gifted a free five yards First and five, trying the option. No blocking available to us. Mark's just getting slammed. I honestly, I should just...
taken a knee the second that we snapped that one. It would have been better. So second and 10, we're right back where we started. And this is just brutal. We are going to look for the mid screen on this one. Even this, I feel like they're covering fairly well. Salam, though. Okay, Osita getting us seven yards. We'll take it. In my eyes, a lot of the times these screen plays can be a big crutch, but you know, when that's all that you got going for you, you got to take it. Alderman, fourth and inches. I'm going for this. Otherwise, we're going to lose with no points on the board. See what we can do here. Fullback dive coming on this fourth and inches. Open for the best up the middle. He makes contact. He's over the line easily. Tosh Little, three yards on the play. We'll take that. Heck, maybe the fullback dive is a play that we should be running a little bit more often. So we will look to pass. So far hasn't been going too well, but oh my gosh, dude. How can you not throw the ball accurately like three yards? Oh, that's brutal. Just feels like nothing can go right for us. They are definitely bringing pressure on this one, but I'm committed to the run. Seeing what we can do. Little gets two yards. It's third and long, though. And we're just one of five on third downs. This is five wide for the quarterback who can't throw. Could be a mistake. Outside the pocket. X is open. B is wide open. We find Osita. The, the biggest thing there is I was scared to throw. He, he was wide open, but I, I didn't know if we were just going to miss him or not. But we get the first down. We finally convert, and it feels like maybe there's something that we can do here. Trying to run now that the pass has been firmly established as a threat, and Steven's just going to lose the yard immediately. And it's second 11, and we're going back to the five wide look, seeing maybe if we can find something. They're going to bring a, a little bit of pressure, and Miller was open, but we can't hit him. It's third and 11, just like that. You know, I got to be honest, I, I'm giving him some grief, but I would not want to be in Cordell Carroll's shoes. He has a walk-on at a D1 school. He's probably never really played football before. At least it's probably been a couple of years. And he's just getting everything thrown at him. So it feels like we're asking the world of him. And honestly, to an extent, that is true. Davis, I want him just to go get something. Maybe he can come free. And maybe something positive can happen here. Fourth and seven risky spot to go for it but again i am desperate for some points b is wide open Osita ran in oh no they they ran into each other we had we had Osita wide open and i think he just hit the other receiver so it just falls to the turf disastrously and just like that they get the ball at midfield and oh my their blocking is just so good compared to ours almost feels like it doesn't matter how many people that I rush, they're going to be there to shut us down. Seeing what we can do, it is a run up the middle, and uh, my goodness. He's just dancing his way forward every single time he touches the football. It's time to just bring the house on every play until they pass, because we can't stop the run. First and 10, quarterback does step back to pass. He's going to have a man open. Sandy able to bring him down, and honestly, we're just, yeah, we're going to commit to stopping the run, because... I, we just can't do anything else. Illinois taking a timeout with a minute and 44 left. They want these points. I don't blame them as we are going to try to bring a little bit of pressure. There's going to be guys wide open. Quarterback scrambling, though. <laughs> we dropped the hammer on him. Taking a second timeout. I'm fine with that. Again, we're going to try to bring some pressure. Feels like this is going to be a run up the gut. Maybe a little bit to the outside now with that tight end moving in motion. No, they're going to step back to pass. We're there with Sandy to bring him down for a loss. Oh, a chance to hold him to a field goal. Moral victories, boys. That's what we're going for. If they run it here, we're in big trouble. Third and eight, we are expecting a pass. We are playing for the pass. We're only going to bring two. Maybe we can get a little bit of pressure on that quarterback, or maybe, oh, we had the chance to stop him. We did. Fourth and inches. Again, moral victories, and I'm taking a timeout. They're in the field goal formation. Oh, my gosh. It felt for sure like they were about to score on that one. It's not the case, though. Maybe there's a chance that they miss this. Nope, straight up and through, 17 to nothing, but it's a lot better than 21 to nothing. The defense has a little bit of pride in themselves coming off the field as number two Georgia losing early against South Carolina. So just a minute and five here left on the clock. Oh man, they're playing Seven Nation Army. If this was the new game, I would not be able to see anything because this crowd is raucous and that should have been picked off. Man, it's, it's hard to play when your quarterback just can't hit a wide open receiver. The worst part is I don't even think that our running backs have the speed or stamina where even if they got free, they could do anything. But we got to give them a chance on the counter. Nope. Pulled down immediately. It's a loss of three. Oh, that's brutal. 
Well, I'm not going to necessarily go in the hurry up here, but we are going to run a little read option. It looks like, again, they're bringing some pressure. And, oh my god! Is he alive? The speed at which Cordell Carroll went from standing to completely flat on the ground is mind-boggling. He might have just been the first thing that in human history to ever hit light speed. As we have just kind of booted this one back. They took the timeout, so we're going to cheese them with the punt. 28 seconds, and it's first and 10, and a chance to hold them to 17 for the half. I'm not confident, though. We're definitely going to be feeling like the... the well, okay, I thought they were going to be passing, but I guess no timeouts and bad field position they wanted to run, but I guess their runs are just as good as their passes. Jordan Anderson picks up 21. They go in the hurry up. I don't think they needed to because they went out of bounds. Maybe they didn't. Clock is ticking. See what we can do. Stepping back. Quarterback goes to the man that we're guarding. And somehow I didn't completely ruin it. So that's good. But again, the clock is moving. Just tell everybody to back up here. Maybe we can force some sort of pick six. We saw it with Wazoo. We're not seeing it here. Williams steps out of bounds. I don't think he wanted to, but it's the right play because there's two seconds left tonight. They might be in field goal range now. So we tried to ice the kicker with, uh, with two timeouts there and it didn't work. See what they can do on this one. Two seconds in the half. We got a man back to return. It is going to be returnable. Osita Salam. The problem is I don't think he has the stamina, but he, if he gets ahead of steam going, he could go all the way. Osita Salam, he's slowing down. Just a couple of guys left to beat. The 20, the 10, the 5. Osita Salam, the kick six for the first touchdown in our Beavers dynasty. Oh my gosh, what a way to end the half. This is exactly why we have him at the return position. Somehow he's able to get it done. That is massive as we are going to go into the half here after the, the kick after or the point after. Oh, God, I almost missed that. Oh, I did miss it. Ah! Well, shoot, we can't even break our points record. It's 17 to 6. My thumb slipped off the trigger and I couldn't get it back in time at the half down a lot. Uh, they get the ball to start the third quarter. This is just chaos. Uh, and it's not in our favor at the moment. Oh. Oh my gosh. I just missed an extra point. Oh, that's so brutal. The defense is done. Not good. They've had a couple of good plays, but that's it. Offense has been non-existent in the special teams now. Well, but hey, they're the only reason that we maybe even stand a chance to be in this game. So we love to see that. Let's just hope that the second half goes a little bit better. So it's going to be Newman getting this one underway again as it's not a great kick down to the three. Can't quite get him into the end zone yet. And this looks like it could be a good return. No, tattooed Jonah Morris. So get them inside the 30. That's always a good thing. Well, these guys ran all over us in the first half. So we're going to be rushing five on most of these plays. Uh, and we have gotten to the quarterback. So if that happens, I'm not. Gosh, dude, this Jordan Anderson guy is just obliterating us. He's averaging 18.2 yards per carry. Yeah, I'm pretty sure in real life they would never do anything but run him because it is unstoppable at the moment. See if we can get there. It's not. I th kind of thought it was going to be a draw. Instead, it's a completed pass and another first down. Terrell Frazier is 7 of 8. He is looking really good for this Illinois team. They're going to start passing. We're bringing pressure. Does it matter? Oh, there's a broken tackle. Fortinal saves it, but we gave up seven on the scramble. That's just it can't happen. Anderson is in here on this play. Oh, no. Well, there's going to be a couple guys wide open. Oh, no. I thought Salam had it picked off. Otis was right there for it. <laughs> I thought I had the ball. I started to run the other direction. Let's take a look at this. That was right in the breadbasket. Salam just, oh, he just had it stripped out of his hands there. Oh, we should have the ball, but the turnover is not to be. And just like that, Illinois down to the 12-yard line. Once again, these guys are just doing work. Thomas, oh my gosh, even when we have a great chance to stuff a run, we just get obliterated. Even the backup's getting involved now. So it's second and inches from the two. Yeah, we have no chance. As far as I'm concerned, this is going to be just rammed down our throat. Quarterback finds a man. It's Tip Ryman again. Two-yard touchdown, his second of the day. It's 24 to 6. So with 420 left in the third, we are coming up now against a defense that to this point has only given up 24 yards of total offense. Make it 23, because we just lost another. 
Man, Stephen Mark averaging a half a yard loss per attempt. That is not going to cut it as... Oh, he's looking for Salam there on the short curl. It almost got picked off. Well, we'll see what Junior Franklin Jr. can do here. Well, never mind. It was a mid-screen, but he was just blanketed. And I'm lucky to get the ball away. Once again, just a quick three and out. Man, this OSU team is not feeling it right now. Uh, they call the fair catch. He called the fair catch, I thought. Oh, maybe he didn't. I could have sworn that hand went up. I don't know. Seems a little bit rigged. Well, we've got them at least on the other side of the 35-yard line now. First and 10. This is going to be a run, right? I don't think I've called a single one of these correctly, but it feels like it is, and it is. And Sandy's there. Gosh, it took two guys just to have a chance to bring him down. Well, we'll see what we can do. Second and nine. Looking for the toss play. How Miller slows him down. Sandy, everybody else shows up. It's a loss of two. That is a miracle. Oh my gosh. We just took like three yards off of his average yards per carry with that. Now here's the problem. It's third and 11 and they have been passing extremely well. No, they're going to go with a little draw. I missed. Oh, I just whiffed. Anderson's picking up a first down and a whole lot more. Oh my God. Somebody needs to take me out behind the woodshed and put me out of my misery because this is just abysmal. Disastrous performance for me. Harvey, uh, man, where was that last play? Second and 13, but it's just a play too late. We get the stop there. Backup McCray is in. That's a good, good sign for us. Let's see. They are actually going to hand it off to him. And oh my gosh, dude, they are just pinballing off of us. We can't bring these guys down. We'll see if they decide to pass it here. If they do, it's a touchdown. If they don't, maybe we stand a chance. And oh, a gift. They felt bad for us. So it's third and seven. Anderson still being in worries me for sure. We'll see what we can do as this looks like. Oh my God. I just, he fumbled. <laughs> oh, what the heck? We have the ball. I gave up because I just got completely torched. I thought he was going out. He went in and I, I, Fortinal just saved us. This is great field position as far as I'm concerned. The turnover looking good. But the problem is it's our offense on the field. So don't expect much. Steven Mark probably should have kept it. Uh, Carroll, though, slides down for a first down on the option keeper. That puts us almost across midfield. I don't like the way this one's looking. Let's flip the play. It seems like they were stacked up a little bit strong on that side. And I want as much blocking. I know we're running a counter, but I don't want them to have any. Oh, my gosh. It's not often that I'm face palming in real life because of something that happens in a video game, but just happened on that one. And now it's second and 13. Any gains that we did have are gone and Novak dropped the football. Ah! We finally get the pass into the vicinity of a receiver and the receiver drops it. It is our backup running back, but he's number 86. He should have some hands. It's not the case there. And now it's third and 13. X is open. Miller catches it. It's a completed pass for 19 yards. Sound the alarm bells because we have just gone for an alarm on this one. I don't even know what that means. Uh, it sounded a little bit fun though. First and 10 in enemy territory. Mark getting a little bit of a move. Shimmy shake. And he's got nine on the ground. And with just 40 seconds left in this third quarter, we're going to go to Little here on the fullback dive. Oh. Oh, they're trying to pick up the first down. We're going to ram it down their throat. They're not going to let us fail on that many fullback dives in a row, right? If we do, if we go into the fourth quarter, four and out here, that's going to be rough. Giving it back to Little. Good job. Okay, we swapped directions, and it was just enough to trick them. Taj Little, eight yards. Another first down inside the red zone. Let's we'll see if we can squeeze one more play out here in this third quarter. It is Novak, the man who dropped a pass while wide open, who's going to get the football here. Cut it back inside, and we'll take positive yards. Five yards on first down is massive for this offense. And we can go into the fourth quarter with our chins held high. Hey, we've scored points. Yeah, I might have screwed up an extra point, but things are looking okay. Let's see if we can get an offensive touchdown to finish this one out. Just 14 yards separates us from the end zone as we will look to have something right bumper over the middle. Miller held on to it through the contact. Jermaine is making some plays here. That is something that you love to see. And 
We might be risking a little bit too much. A little shovel option. We're going to give it to Steven Mark and, gosh, tattooed immediately. <laughs> that sucks. I swear, every time we get a little bit of momentum building, it's immediately stolen away from us. As they're going to bring pressure outside the pocket with Carroll. Why could be coming open? We get it to him. It's Novak. He dropped a pass earlier this time. It's a dive into the end zone for our first offensive touchdown and a chance for me to kick an extra point for the first time successfully with these Oregon State Beavers. Oh my goodness. Cutting the deficit to just half of what they've scored so far. The game wants me to go for two and it makes sense. It would make it a 10 point game instead of an 11 point game, but I need to redeem myself and we, we need guaranteed points that is a season high for us now and i don't know if i'm going to be able to beat that so when the points are available we've got to take them um it's just for pride's sake really nothing else so we got to stop last time out is that what that no they I, yeah we forced a fumble is that what it was i don't remember either way they're gonna run it and anderson's gone <laughs> he just finds a gap when there's not one there he makes a gap himself that's how strong he is i'm coming to expect just plenty of running for the rest of this game uh but every time i try to blitz heavily they screw me over and they pass it and then it's like a huge first down gain through the air and this time again gang tackling we stop jordan anderson just hold him to one yard we are just gonna keep trying to bring pressure Second and nine. I am expecting them to go to the air. They hand it off and oh my gosh. We stuffed it. Where did that come from? Devin Hagen. His first tackle for loss. Well, now I'm nervous. Third and 11. We know that they're going to pass here. Question is, what can we do to stop it? If anything, and there's a man wide open. He stepped out of bounds. His fourth down. That's a defensive stop. We count those. So the punt team is out on the field. I know it feels like we, there's no chance for us to win, but there is still a chance. Four minutes left in this game. Down two scores. If we if we put up a quick one, you never know. Osita Salam already has one special teams touchdown. He's not going to get another on that punt return. Well, let's see if we can put together a, a second drive in a row here. Try to build a little bit of consistency. Osita Salam. Why could be open if he gets it there. It's Novak. He's dropped one. He catches that one. Steps out of bounds. Oh my gosh. That could have been a touchdown. He had some speed built up there. More importantly, can we talk about the dime that... Uh, Cordell Carroll just threw there. It was a thing of beauty. Steven Mark, well, he's immediately going to lose yards as, as he tends to do. And with three and a half minutes left, we're going to have to go back to the air. I'm kind of looking for Novak or Franklin Jr. out there. We're going to get outside the pocket. I don't like either of these options. Just toss it. No, if we could have got it to I, the problem is I don't think we can throw on the run. So I tried to stop for that one. And now it's third and 13. Stepping back. They are bringing a little bit of pressure. 81. Oh, I didn't see that corner coming. He almost picked that off. It's 4th and 13. As much as I don't want to, we've got to go for this one. Uh, otherwise, you know, we're just laying down and, and saying die, and we can't afford that. 4th down. They're bringing a lot of pressure. Just getting rid of it. That's not <laughs> I threw it to right bumper. It went to the completely wrong receiver there, and it's a turnover on downs. Oh, the pressure. Getting to Cordell Carroll on that one. Illinois is busting out some new tech for us with this music as they're going to hand it off. They are in a clock burning mode. And this guy has just broke like four tackles. Ugh, that's, that's brutal. Clock will continue to tick down here inside. Two and a half minutes left in this game now. See if we can keep bringing pressure. I, I expect them to keep running the football here. It seems like, oh my gosh, one, it's working well enough, but two, it's just the kind thing to do. And oh, this guy is just too good. He fumbled that football. I want to let that be known. It looked like that popped out free at the end. There was a big hit, but it went out of bounds. They they caught a break there. Feels a little bit weird to say that they caught a break on such a big run, but that was, we brought the hit stick and it popped free. It was just because he was on the sideline. The ball immediately went OB and well, it doesn't matter because they're giving them a, a Josh McCray the ball there and it's first and goal. We literally can't stop them. They've stopped trying to burn the clock here too. They want this touchdown. They want it desperately. Two minutes now on the clock. We'll see if we can just jam this up and, and pray for the best. I'm honestly... I wish we could jump the line here, Troy Polamalu style, as... Well, gosh, maybe they are just burning the clock out. They just did it in the really rude way, trying to extend my commentary. I guess that's good for you guys. You guys want to hear all the beautiful words I have to say, right? We can jump the snap. Quarterback. Well, he's got uh, Sean Joseph wide open on the little play action there. Well, 
one minute, 44 seconds of pain left as Sandy is going to get a chance to return this one. And he's actually... Oh, he had good blocking. I just got a little bit too close and the men shed the block and just latched onto us. There's no need for me to risk throwing some interceptions and hurting Cordell's confidence any more than it already has in this game. So we are just going to be handing it off and running this one out. We did score more than twice as many points as we did in the first game. So at this rate, by the end of the season, uh, the the number that we're going to be scoring is, what is that, in the millions? Maybe the billions? Uh, we're going to be unstoppable. Okay, I did the math. It, it, it's not quite the millions or the billions, but 12,000 points in a, in a single football game would certainly be something to see. I don't know if there's physically enough time to score that many points. Uh, I, I kind of want to see it happen, though. And we'll let the clock just burn down there. No reason to continue this one any further. I don't know why they're focused on, on Brian Cafu, the star right guard, but he did nothing good for us. We did keep them under 300 yards, and because Oregon State is playing this game and Washington State has a bye, Oregon State is going to be the first coach to level up. It's going to be Willie Met level two. Uh, there's a chance that Paul Laus uh, levels up just because of recruiting, but Oregon State has a little bit of an edge there. It's going to help them that just that little bit more with recruiting, and it could matter in a couple of seasons. But we're going to leave this one 0-2 after a 31-13 beatdown. Uh, a couple of nice plays, though. We had some forced fumbles, which is nice. We had a punt ret or a, a field goal return for a touchdown. There was more positive moments in this game than the last game. And if we just keep building those up week in and week out, we're going to end pretty happy with where we're at. Uh, one win is the goal for the season at this point. We'll see if we can beat that. Let me know in the comments if you guys think it's possible. So that one ends up pretty brutal for us. 28 yards rushing, 86 through the air. We didn't have any turnovers though. We created two turnovers, but we won the turnover battle, which means we're positive on the season. The fact that we were within shouting distance in the fourth quarter of these guys is a miracle. Consider 267 rushing yards. That's absurd that we gave that much up. Players of the game, Eric Novak, well-deserved. Uh, he does have the first and only offensive touchdown for this Beaver team. Um, you know, Asita Salam did have a kick six, but that's a special teams play. So he's our special teams player of the game. Uh, Skip Fordnall, a sack and a forced fumble, three tackles, a tackle for loss. I, I specifically remember one of those tackles being very important. That's a good defensive player of the game. Uh, man, two forced fumbles. We had like one others that we forced on Jordan Anderson, but knocked it out of bounds. And it felt like we had a chance with those seeds along to get an interception. So the defense creating some takeaways is very key. Willie Met does reach level two. So we are immediately going to be putting that into uh, the recruiting scouting skill. That's going to save us a ton of points trying to scout guys. That's obviously we're just going to go straight for that. Uh, and then start working on some other stuff. But we're going to need some actual game management skills this time around because these guys are pretty rough. Um, and I, you know, I never really noticed or mentioned our, our coordinators, but because of the way coordinators work, you can't really hire them or fire them. So these guys are going to be gone soon. Uh, Keith Hayward is level 20 and is actually pretty useful, but I'm just not going to put points into these guys this season. Uh, the coordinators for Washington State are worse. Uh, but again, these guys will be gone after a year. And our DC maybe is the reason why we're a little bit better uh, on defense than it feels like we should be. But also, gosh, we're getting obliterated anyways. We just almost gave up 300 yards rushing on six-minute quarters. So obviously, Keith isn't doing that much for us. So that's going to do it for this episode. I hope you guys are enjoying this series so far. Let me know what you think down in the comments. And we're just going to keep fighting. Eventually, we're going to get a win. I'm curious to know. Which team you guys think, now that we've seen uh, two games from the Beavers and one from Washington State, which team do you think it's going to get a win first? Washington State put up more points. They seemed like a better all-around team, but they also were playing an FCS team, whereas the Beavers have just looked like absolute garbage on both sides of the football, but have been playing much tougher opponents. So we'll see what happens there. We'll see which team starts to take the lead in recruiting. But regardless, thank you guys so much for watching. My name is Goonmaster. You guys are the goons wherever you are. Have a good night or have a good morning and we'll see you later. Adios.